Hello Hasbro fans, this is Seth for the Sisters with another Hasbro video and this one is the second edition of Who Could Have Made It To The Clone Wars line, so another five characters to talk about with this edition. No clones this time, not even one only had a minute or died like wax in the last edition, just all non-clones this time, so get right into it and um the first one I want to talk about is Captain Turkin, you know, the a new hope guy who is in the Citadel like, now as a captain. Um, let's be said, um, this we haven't really been dealt justice with the Citadel like, in terms of figures. I mean, in my mind, it, the best arc that we had towards the end of season three, not even towards the season 3. I think the Citadel arc was overall the best arc of season 3 as a whole. And, not really, and I think that's an opinion shared by others fans as well. And I don't really think it's been dealt justice with figures. I mean, we've only had one new figure from that arc, Jedi Master Evan Peel. Very nice figure, um, I have to say. You know, and had a lot of repaint potentials, really. I mean, I was expecting, like, a Sephardus, like, OC Sobek, as you know, Hasbro aren't really keen on releasing Sephardus, especially Commanders. In fact, the only two Sephardus Commanders we've got on this line are Worm Lovesome, who, terrible figure, terrible character, that matches him, um, and Carl Tesca, who is arguably a Sephardus Commander, but in my mind, the only one that counts is Worm Lovesome, so... Sephardus have really been underdone in the line um, and in the show now as well, but um, I was expecting so, but, but I would have expected at least a couple of battle droid repaints. I mean, we could have got a security battle droid, a Citadel Arc version of the commando droid, and even our two's battle droid squad, I mean, Um 10 and one of the generic droids, and we could have got Arc Trooper Echo and Fives in Phase 1 gear, and we ain't getting them either, so... Very disappointing, I mean, it wasn't... I wouldn't say Tekken stood a huge chance, um, even though the Arc was mainly focused around him. It, to be honest, it was mainly the Tekken Arc, and based around that, and him getting to know Anakin. Um, but really, I just... I just think he stood a bit of a chance, I mean, it, I really don't know, it, I think he should be made anyway, because, like, he's getting made in the Vintage Collection, and it would be cool to have an animated version of it as well, and really, Jedi Master Evan Peel kind of looks lonely on displays if he's the only figure from that arc released, uh, and I'd definitely like to see a couple more figures from that arc, I mean... Off the top of my head, we only get from the end of season three. We're only getting Chewbacca. I think there's a rumor that the Trent Ocean Skiff vehicle is coming, so that kind of counters end of season three. Um, nothing from Mortis, even though they said there'd be more. Even though Hasbro said there'd be multiple figures from Mor the Mortis egg, and so far we've had three confirmed for the Night Sisters egg, which is. The two versions of Savage Press released last year and Republic Commando Boss coming this month, but I really think there should be several more, cut no, nah, at least a couple of more figures released from the Citadel. Like, I'd really like to see Wado's being taken. I'll definitely be getting the vintage version anyway. Um, second up is Sugi. Uh, she's not one of my favorite characters on the show, even though. I'm a fan of the voice actor Anna Graves. She does a good job voicing Suki. Um, but I have to say, the figure would look very nice on display, a figure of Suki. And I mean, we just really need her to complete her band from Bounty Hunters in Season 2. I mean, okay, you could say, what does Rumi Parameter? But really, who even thinks about Rumi Parameter? I mean,. What's the bane some people who what who have watched the episode and are now watching the video will remember who Rumi Paramita is, so well I obviously know who Rumi Paramita is, but there'll be people out there who don't remember her who didn't know her name in the first place, um and like we got Ember in two thousand and ten 
Sarah passed last year in 2011, so we might as well complete the band with Hasbro might as well complete the band with Sugi, and I, that's definitely a figure I'd pick up, and Hasbro really need to release, so I know they've got this thing against female figures, but I mean, come on, Sugi, let's get her to display with the Embo and Sarah Pass figures, Hasbro, because they kind of look a bit silly with think their leader if you know what I mean. I mean don't get me wrong, the Ambo figures Ambo and Surpass figures look good, but if you get what I'm saying, they kinda look a bit silly on the display with think like, their the leader of their gang there. So yeah. And the third one is another female character, Jedi Master Adi Galia. I mean she's appeared in what nine episodes now, um oh Ah, uh, that was nine episodes by the end of Nomad Droids, because that was her main appearance in season four. And again, she was only in, a f in like four of the 22 minutes of it, but you get what I'm saying. It was more main than her cameos that she usually gets. Um, and really, I mean, the, uh, she's the only... She, no, she's one of only two Jedi who have yet to be made as anime figures from... The Jedi Council of Twelve. Um, there's her and Upper and Sisters who will be coming to the Clone Wars. Dave Filoni confirmed. So once he appears, only Oppo and Adi Gali will need to be made from the Jedi Council's figures. Of course, Adi Gali needs to die so Stasali can take her place, and same with Eve Kaff and Agen Kala. Um, but yeah, we really need an Adi guy class figure. It's definitely something I'm hoping for and I would definitely pick up. You know, I'm not really that much a fan of the character, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it is a problem that we're not getting guy yet. But the fact is, um, unlike characters like Tech, and I talked about earlier in this video, and Akbar in the last one, Hasbro haven't said they're absolutely not making Adi Guy yet. Like they said completely no to Akbar, Tech and even characters like Armagundi and Season 3. They haven't said completely no to Adi Guy in all this time. They've just been like, oh she's not coming in 2012. So I think Adi Guy will come to the line eventually based on Hasbro not saying she's definitely not coming. So I think before the line is done, we will see an anime of Adi Galia, um, and I hope my suspicions are right there. Um, number four, and the last female on this edition, Padme Amidala in her Naboo Bar gear. But you could also actually take this for her scuba gear as well as Naboo Bar gear. I mean, like, think back a couple of years, I mean, say, more than a couple, three to four, because... Those were when the two comes Pamela and Madara figures that both on my display above my head. Uh, um, they they really said two adventure fits from the Clone Wars in the line from back then. I mean, we haven't ever seen a Pamela figure of her Senator gears. One was actually rumored ages ago when the line first started, but it never came out. Um, and the only two outfits they released as figures were Adventure Gears, her white Adventure Gear and her Destroy Malevolent Adventure Gear, which is her main outfit in the Clone Wars, really. Well, it's the one that's appeared in more than one episode, to be honest. Um, and you would think if they didn't have so many limits on the line and scaling back on which characters they want to make as figures, you would think they might make another Padme uh, figure in her some adventure gear like Naboo Battle or even Scuba. Um, I, that would be pretty cool. I mean, I am hoping for more um, Padme Amada figures, not just in this line, but in other lines. In fact, I've even got a couple of older ones um, on the way. Um, not really sure how long it takes until I get, they get here. There's like the Arena Escape one from all the way back uh, when Attack of the Clones came out and the 30th anniversary black letter outfit version, but anyway, um, and the last one on this list is another character that, you know, is played by the same voice actor who voiced Tech and Steven Stanton, and this one is Moralo Ival, of course, from the Bounty Hunters arc, one of the last arcs in season 4, in fact, the second last arc, because 
It was two four packs in a row at the end of season four. Um, Morale Rival, the character didn't really impress me, but unique design, even though it is, I am, it is a bit of a rip off of Dengar's, yes, but he is still for unique design. I mean, I like, I, I would prefer to see Sobek, but what I kind of like on Morale Rival is how half his face is like green and then the other half is yellow. Kind of looks unique and nice, um, and I would definitely buy a Morale Rival figure if Hasbro chose to release one. It's pretty unlikely, I mean, if they made anything from that arc, it'd be more likely to be, you know, Cad Bane in that Season 4 outfit of his and Reiko Herdeen, but Morale Rival, like I said, I'm not really a fan of the character. The only thing I really like about the character is, of course, actually the voice that Stephen Stanton does for him. And his backstory, but I kind of don't think about the backstory because the character wasn't as epic as his backstory seemed to make him out to be. Um, but I would definitely buy a Morale Val figure should Hasbro release him. But, yeah, yeah, I really don't know what they are doing with the line. I mean, hopefully next year, I mean, hopefully next year Hasbro will, like, start releasing new figures, like, unique ones again. Um, I actually believe that this year, well, when they start, like, plotting figures for this year, like, there was a change in mani management in the Clone Wars, in the Hasbro team, I should say, and um, the main person on the Star brand was shifted over to some other brand, and some new guy came in, and I'm not sure if this new guy is a fan of the Clone Wars, which is my, why the Clone line may be getting a bit ripped off or something, but I do hope that next year, we get some more unique figures. I mean, even some Death Watch repaints at this stage would be considered unique from the Mandalorian Worry and Free Vistler figures released in 2010. But yeah, anyway, this concludes another edition of Who Could Have Made It to the Clone Wars line. This is going to be my last version of edition of this for a while at least, probably at least a week or so. I mean, I'm gone from tomorrow. Tuesday until Sunday, so will be a lot while until the next one, maybe in two weeks or close to that. I hope you've enjoyed this edition. May the force be with you and happy hunting.